All right, everybody, this is Justin Williams Savoy. It's a beautiful, sunny day here in Southern Oregon. We had a couple of uh, rainy days and the weather wasn't the best, but it's always good days like that, I find, for introspection, for soul searching, digging deep, contemplating, meditation, prayer, what have you. Or just chilling and practicing self-care, which is something I've been learning um, a lot about lately. Um, but I haven't made a video for a few days, and I needed to make one. I felt like I'd be consistent and try to do one day by day. However, that hasn't really been the vibe that I've been on, so it's whatever. And like I said, I made some videos, kind of like a new trailer for the channel, and I need to get my shit together and do a, um, with the computer and get on and add the new trailer and change up the channel and do all that stuff. And it's just, I'm not totally really feeling it right now. I got a lot of other things going on. I'm doing art. Um, working on some tattooing stuff with my girlfriend. My girlfriend is a therapist by occupation, so, but she's an art therapist and she also went to art school. So we do a lot of art together and um, I've been teaching her some things about tattooing and we've been kind of geeking out on that. Children, my kids are doing sports right now, so that's what's up. Um, Finally, the sun came out and did some yard work. I still got a bunch of weed whacking and other bullshit to do, but for another day. Today's Taco Tuesday, so in a few, my girlfriend will get off work. And when she comes back, then we'll go out and get some food, some margaritas, and some tacos or something. So, yeah, word up. So, working on art. Doing some stuff, checking out some esoteric, minor, major, arcana type of stuff. I don't know the same old for me, really, but getting some cool art going on. Probably going to frame some of this stuff uh, here for, the, uh, for our home. Going to do some more stuff, Hermetica. This stuff, I'm looking for more minimalistic, hermetic stuff, art, for tattooing, etc. You guys may recognize this. Looking at minimalist um, uh, tarot stuff. I've always had an esoteric bent, although I primarily study theology, religion, philosophy, definitely have a spiritual path. Um, there's so many interesting conversations that can be had about that too. Um, talking to my girlfriend about Christianity and especially like evangelical Christianity and my opinions about all that. Um, I could do a whole thing on some of my religious beliefs, I guess, but I mean, I guess it'd be pretty much esoteric Christian um, but also perennialist, traditionalist, there's a lot to be said there. Mm. Spent more than half of my life now studying scripture and studying scripture from also, um, other world religions, Vedic stuff, um, studying, I studied magic a lot as a, um, young guy, as a child really. And I made a um, video, I think, about my journey, and I said the first spiritual book I ever read was uh, Bhagavad Gita, and um, man, I should get back into some of that stuff. Mostly, I want to be reading my Bible, and you know, I use 1611 King James, not because of anything other than like, really, I just like the language and the feel of it, but I like to study um, ancient languages and linguistics as well. Um, I'm into Indo-European linguistics. So, um, you know, I can study the original texts as well, and really nothing at this point, it's going to really change my worldview. Um, I'm always open to interpretation. I know it's somewhat subjective as well, but um, I guess I would definitely put myself in the perennialist, um, traditionalist camp. 
Um, here's some stuff I've been like looking at also art wise. Siggles, staves, all that good stuff. A lot of the tattooing that I am going to be getting, I mean, there's a whole thing about tattoos, and I've been getting tattooed since I was 14, and I'm 46 now. I think the first tattoo I got was like my last name and script writing on my shoulder in Orange County. These ones are kind of faded out. And then I'm looking at some Sanskrit stuff. And I'm always interested in, like I said, like especially Indo-European linguistics because um, language shapes how we view the world and words have power like take for example just the term itself spelling like casting your spells you go um, words have power thoughts have power intentions have power so I guess I'm not gonna get on any kind of preaching thing but <laughs> beware when you say that but uh I think intentions are just about everything. And if your intentions are deceptive or, um, you know, I'm just doing free flow, free association, thinking, musing, pondering. Um, so want your intentions to be right. You want them to be correct. Um, say what you mean and mean what you say. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. And, you know... I can get on the negative trip. I'm not going to. I will bring back the Wolvie playlist someday. I may do another channel. I do have another channel for um, video game stuff, you know. Um, but I don't really post to it. I put some more obscure um, PSN, PlayStation Network, um, simple 2000 collection type of games on there that were like rare Japanese games that just really no one probably cares about except for weirdos like me, like I'm into that stuff. You can see some of those videos that are on there now. Um, but I'm into the origins of things. My girlfriend nailed that when she reminded me that, you know, that's what I'm really, really interested in is going back to the very origins of things. So if I'm going to consider myself a Christian person, I'm going to research the ancient church. That's how I kind of ended up more in the Orthodox camp. Um, it was kind of funny because I can't really judge the heart or intentions of people, but I did have an ex one time that said that she was interested in being married in the Orthodox Church, and I think it was just a like thing to kind of, I'm not going to really focus on that, but just a thing to kind of, I don't know, get me, I guess. What? Or get in my head, or I don't know. But really that person I don't think had any idea of what it is to follow an Orthodox path, and I can't say that I'm on that path at all. Um, Especially when it comes to self-denial, it is good to deny thyself, to um, put others before yourself, all those basic teachings, whether it's Christian or even Buddhistic and thought. Um, I can go, I'm going to show you guys um, some music I picked up today, but I could go on a whole tangent of like where I'm at psychologically. I don't really know if that's necessary because one thing is I took myself off social media and just attempting to sever all tendrils to, um, like, no offense to you. If you're one of my friends, you already know. And if you're a person I love and care about, you already know that, or you should know that. So it's not about that. It's just about, like, tendrils that are attached to me and avenues that people could come um, at me. And I received a few messages on Messenger and my girlfriend as well. It's just childish, pedantic bullshit grasping at straws really and somewhat pathetic so that's all the energy I'm going to feed that you always got to remember when you're dealing with those people like positive or negative attention or if you want to call it supply is what it is and they're just kind of a stub toe really at this point you know so moving forward um 
I cut that out. I'm feeling better every day. It's been a while now. I've been off social media. My girlfriend's been off social media. And posting to this YouTube is all that remains. And it's been a little bit difficult as far as promoting the channel. Because, um, you know, whenever I post to Instagram or Facebook, I get a lot of views on my videos. But also, <laughs> TikTok is really funny. And I was exploring that. And sure enough, I was right. I used to do like a bunch of like really lame uh, little shorts with just myself and like a music track. Just to kind of see because... I was looking at all these people doing that, and I've always been interested in selfie culture and just how lame that is and how really pathetic it really is. And I do it. Um, I've done it. I've been guilty. But kind of my reasoning for some of that, not to give away too much of my master plan, but uh, was really just to um, see how that works. And like our society, man, it's like really, <clears throat> is my life all that interesting? Um you know? Selfies for days. Chicks do that shit. So that was kind of my thinking on that. And also it's just to see and like learn the algorithm. And I learned that and saw what it was worth. And it's pretty worthless in my opinion. You could do dope ones though about like art or just show a piece of art or a piece of music and keep it real brief and like have some little summary and it could just be quick shorts people could watch because people's attention spans, you know, my spiritual father, he was like a Orthodox hermit and monk and priest, um, fled Russia, just an intense, intense story. And, um, living as a hermit in Wolf Creek, when I met him amongst his books, sleeping every night in an old Baptist church pew, always wearing his cassock and living an aesthetical um, hermit life and he'd have visitors come and he'd give them spiritual advice and uh he told me the average human attention span is like 20 minutes so it's funny to watch these evangelical pastors that pontificate and they do these elaborate teachings chapter by chapter book by book on scripture and that's all good and everything i guess if you want to learn the bible that's a cool way to do it i mean i participated in that i learned the bible i don't think i necessarily learned a proper interpretation but um the scriptures they got in there so that's cool but really where am i going with this speaking about hermits this is kind of dope i was checking out this hermetic uh i don't know if i already showed this hermetic tarot there's all these hermetic uh tarot cards it's pretty sick um we could talk a lot about spiritual life I need to get myself to where I'm able to have a direction um, for this channel now. I started it. It was kind of a way to um, track my healing from a very toxic relationship I went through. I don't even really think about that person anymore. They come up once in a while. There's some trauma there to be worked on. It was already trauma that was my own. And you want to ask the meaning or reasons why these people came into your life. Um, you know, but there's also a time to move on and move forward. And if I would ask myself in my 20s what I'd want to do and what I'd want to be teaching on YouTube and what I want to be talking about, it'd probably be mostly um, spiritual stuff, literature stuff, myth, comparative myth, traditionalist topics. Things of that nature and books, you know, I'm a lover of books. I'm a bookworm. I could just do an entire um, booktube channel, you know. Or again, I could just do um, a channel focusing on um, depth psychology. Again, two separate channels. I don't know. It'll be interesting to look and to see um, what this um, channel will become. Or if I do something, use this channel as a springboard and go on to do other things, that'll be interesting too. Um, if you guys are interested in esoteric, spiritual topics, hermetica... Um, I'm not going to do like what a lot of those guys do and they get on a conspiracy theory bent i don't think that's what i want to do so i won't do that and i think it's a way to attract viewers you know but we could do some dope stuff and look at some cool books and then apply it psychologically 
kind of use a methodology I'm thinking about pursuing an additional degree, an academic degree that will allow me to teach in university or small um, liberal arts college is something I also always wanted to do. I was on a very intense academic path in my 20s, um, carried somewhat on to my early 30s. Um, and so looking at things like Pacifica Graduate um, Institute, Union Studies, Comparative Myth, and all those things. So, anyways, those are just thoughts and reflections. Just making a video to make a video. Today, I picked up this on vinyl, Reggae Power, The Ethiopians. It's uh, Trojan Records. And super dope. Look at the cover. Um, so, this reminded me a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff I used to collect. And... Um, DJing, DJing mostly uh, electronica, uh, EDM music. Back in the day, there's a lot of that in that town, Ashland, Oregon, and I kind of exited that scene when I got into my first marriage. So when it took off really heavily um, with performing arts groups and stuff in um, Ashland, like um, El Circo. And then later on, groups like Do Lab in Southern California and stuff like that. Um, I still follow some of that. I'm still interested in some of those DJs, but it's more of just like an old school nostalgic Ashland vibe that I get on when I'm into that. The last time I went to Burning Man was 2009. That camped at the L Circle Do Lab camp, Simpler Times. There's a lot of cool Ashland heads there, and that was a good time. And then after that, some close friends of mine, one who's a phenomenal graffiti artist passed away another one who's a bartender and kind of a local personality he died and I just chose to move out into the country I was going to move to Oakland California before that but made a different um, choice and decision and uh, three children later and all these other great things so so yeah this thing uh, I'm thinking about um, probably DJing again uh, reggae and northern soul and more like Tomla soul stuff UK um, Bent, and that comes out of my childhood, late teen years. Um, so I'm thinking about doing that, but more like maybe just for myself, maybe filming different DJing sessions in like really small venues for like reggae night. Like there used to be um, a bar in Ashton, Oregon called Taboo, and my homies and I used to go to reggae night there, and that was dope. But uh, yeah, you can't go wrong with stuff on Trojan, Pamla, Blue Beat stuff. There's just tons of it. And this is what I've been listening to and totally vibing on lately. Music on vinyl, the Ethiopians, Reggae Power, limited edition of 750 orange colored copies, individually numbered, 180 gram audiophile vinyl. This is a cool company here, uh, Music on Vinyl. Definitely, definitely doing some good releases here. And then don't make fun of me about this, but I picked this up. This is like eighth grade right here. Uh, so this is uh, Ziggy Marley and the Melody Makers. Tomorrow people. Remember that? I used to play volleyball to that shit when i go to the beach or surf or whatever um, as a kid. So I got that. It was like a couple bucks. So I've been buying like more like old Trojan stuff, like the tighten up volumes and stuff like that to... Um, listen to in my car when I'm driving around and you know I was through a massive phase of hip-hop and it kind of relates to me because I've been listening to a lot of stuff like sound system stuff and um, um, ska jazz orchestra big band type of stuff also and sound system music I mean some of that stuff dub plate only some of it uh, ties in deeply to um, old school Jamaican music and also to hip hop, you know, emceeing, moving the crowd, always having an MC and uh, DJ. So that's been the stuff I've been listening to lately. I had to hold off on um, buying a Neurosis record, Pain of Mind. I was just like, this is like so dope, and it's like a repressing from like. Two 2016 or something it's like 17 bucks so I'll probably obsess on it until I go back and buy it if it's not gone but I don't really listen to a, like a lot of um black metal or anything like that anymore or old punk and hardcore once in a while unless it's like bad brains or something but 
just changing the vibration and you know now that i'm out of like some dark places of like living in the underworld like that stuff is good don't get me wrong like, i love it i love black metal nsbm drone um experimental soundscapes um 